What is with all of these big boxes lately? This is from Corsair, obviously, and there's an entire PC inside. Only one problem though, it's not actually built yet. So this is basically Corsair's version of a build kit. Essentially, this is a curated box of components that you'll need to assemble a full-on gaming PC. And of course, you can spec this pretty much however you want with any budget in mind. And yes, in case you're wondering, you'll have a, a build kit video guide to follow if you wanna scan that QR code. Of course, they're gonna show you what components you should have in the box. You can make sure that they're all there. Now, I wanna make it very clear. This is not a Corsair sponsored video. Some of the things you'll hear me say, Maybe negative, that just comes with the territory. And I imagine a lot of that's gonna have to do with the value of this kit, which we'll discuss later in the video. I wanna build it first, and then at the very end of the video, we'll talk about how you can win this, and in case you're wondering, no, it does not matter where you live. As long as we can physically ship you this build, you have a chance to win it. And again, we'll talk about that at the end. Are you ready? Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying Windows activation watermark, head on over to VIP SCD key. Purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say bye bye to the watermark. And be sure to use our offer code SKGS for a so sweet discount. Now, before we get started, yes, I do sound funny. Yes, I have had a cold for like a week. Yes, there's like a gallon of gunk pent up in my nose. And yes, you absolutely needed to know that. Now, the very first thing you'll notice in the box is probably the PC case. This here is the Corsair 4000D Airflow. Of course, Corsair is going to use their own cases for their own build kits. It'd be weird if they didn't. And I really have no complaints about this case other than the fact that maybe it's a, a bit larger than I would personally like, but with graphics cards getting so big nowadays, I mean, this is actually probably perfect for uh, the later 40 series stuff. Although I think we have a 30 series card going in this one just because of the budget. Um, this has great airflow, again, tons of room to build, cable manage, it's all around an excellent choice. Now normally this would be something to complain about, the fact that they intentionally chose a cheap B660 motherboard. I think it makes sense though, in this budget they went with DDR4, that will keep the cost down on the uh, RAM side of things, and also they're pairing it with a, a reasonable C CPU again for the budget, I think. 13400F here, this is still a really good gaming CPU from Intel. It's a relevant modern chip and it doesn't cost a ton of money. And as for that DDR4, they went with two eight gig sticks of Corsair Avengeance LPX memory, 3200 megahertz. This is pretty cheapish. DDR4, honestly, there's nothing special about it. There's not even RGB capabilities baked into this stuff, but it, it'll get the job done. I mean, it, it's an Intel rig. It's, it's not the end of the world. The graphics card's an RTX 3060. I see nothing wrong with this either. Again, as long as it makes sense in the budget, I think that the pairing of hardware uh, is quite nice. Uh, this will obviously give you those ray tracing capabilities if you're interested in certain games, and it's just all around a great uh, graphics card for sheer gaming in, say, 1440p and below. Uh, also nice for content creation, thanks to CUDA acceleration. And the power supply is a CX 550M, nothing special here. It's semi-modular, 80 plus bronze. It's a 550 watt unit. I think it's fine for this, but there's not a lot of future proofing here, not a lot of upgrade pads you can take just by, by keeping this unit. So uh, kind of an end of the road scenario, but it's, eh, eh, we'll, we'll see. Now I just noticed we don't have a box for storage. I wonder if it's in here. This is just like a white unmarked box. So maybe there's like a hard disk drive in here along with like an SSD or some, what is this? Oh, ooh, wow, look at that, a full on toolkit. This is actually pretty sweet. Um, I could definitely use one of these. Check it out, you just push this button right here and boom, there you go. This is. This is handy. I mean, look at all these bits you get. Holy cow, like you're only gonna use like maybe one or two of these bits, more than likely. Um, the fact that you get all this extra stuff to use just for future endeavors, not too bad. Oh, that is, I could do this all day. Anyway, so if our storage is not in any discrete box, maybe it's in here, maybe it's already pre-installed. I don't see a storage drive. It's just like one of those bring your own storage drive scenarios where you just like pop in something you already have laying around. I don't know. I don't think that's how Corsair would do it. Um, maybe it's maybe it's in this bag. Aha. I was going to say, if it wasn't in that bag, we just straight up didn't get storage. This here is an MP600, which is nice. Sorry, I know it's really loud. Um, this It's nice for a budget like this. I mean, I still think this is going to cost well north of $1,000, but uh, this looks to be a one terabyte, I believe, in VME. So, yeah, not bad. And it's Gen 4 compatible, so there's that. First things first, CPU installation. We've got a motherboard on our box here, and we're just going to lift up this lever, pull back here. 
Make sure the socket, yep, looks fine. Drop the CPU in nice and gently. Lower this back down, lower this retention arm, keep this, and there we go. That was pretty easy. You know what, I just realized something else, by the way. We don't have an aftermarket CPU cooler in the box, which is another way Corsair, I'm sure, is trying to save money and lower this budget. We have this thing here, the stock Intel cooler, which, I mean, admittedly, this one feels a bit beefier, a bit more premium than the old cheap ones that uh, used to come in these boxes. It has a copper slug, which, I mean, that's an upgrade in and of itself. I don't know. What do you guys think about these? Have you used them before? I haven't, so we're gonna find out. I suppose the one surefire positive thing about this is that uh, the installation of this cooler is like stupid easy. So let just line up the pins there, and then we gotta poke them through. One, do the opposite corner. I think I'm think I'm doing this right. There we go. And then three, and then four, and that's that's literally it. It, it it's already installed. So uh, I went down to grab a bite to eat, and my voice is completely gone now. So we'll pick this up some other day, but you'll just see a quick jump cut. Here we go. Day two. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. I think I sound okay. It's, it's okay. It's been like two days. For context, I, I had completely lost my voice the day after the previous clip you just saw, and it was pretty much unbearable. I, I think the wife loved it, but um, I felt trapped in my own body. So we're coming back. It, it, again, it's still a little weird, but we need to get this video finished because I'm ready to give it away already. So where were we here? I think we were at RAM installation. That's going to be very straightforward. We've just got two dims here. My only complaint about this Vengeance LPX memory, the fact that the stickers are on the outside, the barcodes, it just looks, I mean, this is how it should look, right? You've got just the logo, it looks really clean, but you've, you've got the, yeah, the barcode on the outside here. I'm not sure if it's just because it's low profile memory or not, but uh, just messing with my OCD a bit. We've just installed our M.2 under this metal slab. Next line of business, prepping the case for Platform merge, we're gonna get our rear IO shield in here first, and I'll try to do this without cutting myself. And I just got demonetized. Easy does it here. I don't know why I insist on installing motherboards this way. It's just for the YouTubes. You are welcome. This is sketchy. Let's see, there we go, something like that. And now, just gotta tighten it down very quickly before it, uh, before it falls over. And now we're just gonna take care of some basic wiring. There's the front panel, more or less, finished. I'm gonna take care of these fan cables next. HD audio and USBs. All right, and there we go, looking pretty good so far. And believe it or not, we only have two other components to install. Well, we're really two and a half, because we've got the graphics card, the power supply, and then this Wi-Fi card, which you also get in the box. Uh, with this particular build kit from Corsair. So not a lot left to do, and it's just one of the side effects of cho choosing a, a cheaper, more budget-oriented uh, build is you don't have like crazy RGB to wire up. You don't have usually AIOs and all the fans and pumps and things to connect. It's just, um, yeah, it's simple. And speaking to the simplicity, all we need to connect here to the semi-modular unit is one single cable for PCI supplemental power. That's it. We don't even need Molex or SATA power cables, although I will include some obviously in the case in case the viewer wants to add stuff later, because we just don't have anything currently in the rig that needs any of that stuff. Easy does it here. Let's move the HD audio cable out of the way. Slide her on in and we'll tighten her down from behind. Easy peasy. Now we're just gonna cable manage a bit and the good thing is it is super easy to do so in the 4000D. Tons of space behind the motherboard tray. You get Velcro straps, cable channels, and check this out, between the power supply and the case, tons of zip ties. But don't worry, we're not gonna use this many. Meanwhile. All right, you ready to see it? Only took about five minutes actually, again, because we didn't have much to do. But it uh, looks really clean. The only cable we obviously still got to uh, connect after this is the PCI supplemental eight pins. Uh, and then we've got the Wi-Fi card. So let's go ahead and get that in first and then the big boy. So in she goes, something like that there. We can also connect this to the top slot. I don't think it's gonna impact much in the way of thermals though for our cards since it is so small. I personally think one of the coolest parts about uh, a build kit like this, obviously when you buy a pre-built, you don't get the hands-on experience. You don't get the you know, the impression that this is your own because you built it with your bare hands. Mm -hmm. But also, you miss the unboxing experience and that to me is worth something in and of itself. So it's cool that you don't forego that in these kinds of build kits, whether it be from NZXT uh, or Corsair or some other brand. Um, just the fact that I can literally just pull graphics cards out of their boxes 
these are brand new components, that's already got an effect on me. And um, maybe I'm just easy, <laughs> but I, I do miss this. And it's something that um, I've learned not to take for granted, especially when it comes to building PCs repetitively. Someone's at my front door. Obviously MSI is not my first choice. It wouldn't be any of my choices if I could have it my way, but uh, this is Corsair. I don't expect everyone to have the same convictions I do, uh, but I will give it credit. It does look pretty sweet. And these are always super easy to install straight into the uppermost 16 lane PCI slot. Oh, I should probably pull back on the tab. That would make things a bit easier. There we go. And it just slots right in. One eight pin cable coming right up. And here we are. That was super straightforward. Building PCs always is. The, the physical act of assembling the rig is straightforward, usually, unless you're building like a custom loop or something. Nine times out of 10, the thing that scares folks, first time builders, is picking the parts, compatibilities, things that you and I might take for granted today because we've been doing this for so long. But I mean, think back to your very first PC build, right? The, the, the first build that you financed yourself, that you did all the research for, that first purchase, right? Having all those parts in your cart and then clicking checkout, it's a little nerve wracking because you're just not totally sure yet if everything's gonna work. Unless you're following a template online, there's always a bit of doubt. And this, this process here where you just buy a curated box of components completely eliminates that. There, there's no need to worry because Corsair's already done the part selection. They've already made sure that things are compatible. And all you need to do by the time the box arrives at your door is just assemble it. I think that that model actually works really well. Again, it's why NCXT is already doing it. It's why Corsair's dipping their toes into this market. And I'm sure others are doing it as well. To be completely honest, I'm really happy with the way Corsair packaged all these products. They were all sent in one big box. They managed to fit the 4000D airflow as well. Big old computer case box in the large box that everything else was also in. So that was nice. It all showed up in one big box at my door. What's in the box? Um, you've got the instructions as well. Obviously scan the QR code. You can find the step-by-step -step tutorials. If you're super green at this, then uh, those will come in very handy. The only question lingering now is the price. This will ultimately sway the review one of two ways. It's either gonna be a negative review or a positive one because this stuff, let's be fair, is pretty easy, especially for a company like Corsair. But what they charge and what they mark up, that is going to be the decider, I think. Also, I wanna mention that you will get a uh, copy of uh, Windows 10 here to activate. So that's gonna be included in our parts breakdown. You're probably not gonna be paying the same price Corsair is for these. I think retail is like a hundred bucks. It's something stupid. Uh, I don't recommend you spend a hundred dollars on a retail key but um, you know, they're probably getting bulk discounts. Maybe they got volume dealers. Uh, so we'll factor that in as well as all of the other components here and see if it actually is worth your hard earned. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna type in Corsair build kit. If I was just searching online, we'll click on their homepage for this. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned this already, I have no idea what this thing is priced at. I think I might have glanced at it in the email, but that was several weeks ago. So we're gonna do this together. Um, I think we bought the cheapest. It's called the Core. That's right, it's got the i5-13400F, the RTX 3060, and 16 gigs of DDR4, along with a one terabyte NVMe SSD. This is priced at $1199, so essentially $1200. I wanna see if shipping is included, because that obviously is gonna be a pretty penny. If not, I'm gonna add it to my cart, and check out. Oh wow, this is cool. So it looks like I get standard at three to five day shipping for free. That's nice. And then express one to two day shipping for 20 bucks. I mean, even that I think is a pretty sweet deal if you want it uh, overnighted or, or two day. So um, the total, if I checked out today would be $1,283.99. First impressions, I don't think that's grossly overpriced. There might be uh, maybe two to $300 buffer all in, but uh, I'm curious. Let's go ahead and check PC Part Picker. Uh, it looks like if you wanted to build almost this exact rig, I think I was able to find every single component exactly available, uh, either on Amazon or Newegg mostly. And I think one exception was Corsair for $1,127.87. And that includes a TP-Link wireless Wi-Fi uh, adapter and Windows 11 OEM, which is like I said, it's like a hundred bucks. You could definitely get that cheaper if you didn't want to buy a retail key. Uh, but if you factor that price in, we're only about, oh gosh, 80 bucks off 
more or less. So they're, they're charging $80 for, for you know, the, the build fee, essentially, like the curating. They're not building it, but they're sending it to you, and it's free shipping. So, I mean, that's, uh, geez. And you add taxes to that. I mean, you're, you're really not far off the mark at all. Pretty impressed, Corsair. This actually is a is a it's a nice breath of fresh air. Um, good to see that that you're not charging crazy assembly fees or curating fees. I mean, to be fair, you're not doing too much work to begin with. You're going to have most of these parts already on in inventory. I know that, but um, still, you, you definitely could have charged a bit more if you wanted. The fact that you kept it competitive, just based on the current market that I'm seeing here, this is this is good stuff. Good guys, Corsair. And remember, like I said, we're not being paid by Corsair for this video. In fact, I told them very bluntly up front that, uh, hey, <clears throat> we're gonna be critical if we need to be. Um, this is our job. This is going to be treated as a review. And there might be things that we say that you don't particularly like. They understood that. <clears throat> they knew the risks. And that's always a risk. When a company sends anything, uh, Is we might not like it. We might not give it a favorable review. But they were confident enough in the product to send it in the first place. And then for us to find that, that really, I mean, based on what you could spend today if you wanted to buy these components yourself, that they're not really marking these up much at all. That was definitely a place where they could have, and they chose not to, to be competitive. Um, it, it's definitely kind of a, a self-preservation thing, I'm sure to some extent, but uh, it is nice to see that uh, companies aren't willing to just totally rip you off. And again, to be fair, they're not doing a ton of work. Yeah, I, I want to stress, this is not a pre-assembled build. You have to do the work yourself of assembling the rig. Um, we're going to turn it on in a second just to make sure that uh, that it works. And then uh, we'll also see if Windows is loaded on the drive because the drive wasn't shipped in its box. It was shipped in like a separate box. So maybe they already loaded Windows on here as well, which would take some of the stress out of OS installation later. Windows is by far the most popular operating system, love it or hate it. That's just how it is. So let's see if that's on here before we conclude. Here we go. Let's see what happens. Power on at the rear, power on up front. Things are looking good so far. Looks like this motherboard does have a set of debug LEDs. So that's nice. In case you need to diagnose things. <clears throat> diagnose, God, I can't even speak right now. Still in the recovery phase, folks, I apologize. Let's see, it sounds like fan curves are settling down, so it's probably, yep, it's gonna post. Okay, looks good. I always forget, I need a keyboard. In the BIOS now, one of the first things you'll want to do is enable XMP, and based on this boot tab here, it does look like we already have Windows Boot Manager, which means there's a Windows partition on this drive. So uh, let's go ahead and reset and see if that is the case. Hey, and would you look at that? Windows is already here. So uh, that's actually nice. Again, it's just pretty much gonna be plug and play after you get your rig assembled. Uh, you should just probably install graphics drivers and uh, activate Windows with the activation key, which I'll also include in the rig for whoever wins this. But uh, yeah, you can go ahead and set this up as you please once you win it, if you win it. Speaking of, Let's end with that. How do you win that rig right there? We're gonna do things very similar to what we've done in the recent past. All I'm gonna ask that you do, because you guys are usually gracious about this, is just subscribe if you aren't already subscribed and comment in this comment section. That's it. No Gleam link, none of the crazy loopholes a lot of other companies and brands make you go through. Just pretty straightforward. If you comment, you're entered to win. And if there are issues with maybe your age or something like that, when it comes to winning, you can always have a parent or guardian represent you. If you don't live in a country where we might have issues shipping, you're eligible as well. This is an international giveaway. But if you live in a country like North Korea, I don't even know if you can watch YouTube in North Korea, that's pretty much a no-go for us. So just be mindful of that. Other than that though, you're free to enter. Even if you have a rig that's maybe as powerful or more powerful than this one, maybe you have a friend in mind who you could give this to, that would be pretty sweet. I can't control who enters and who doesn't. Obviously, I'm not gonna vet them any more than just where they live and make sure that they can uh, receive a shipment like this. But uh, my voice is... It's on the edge here, folks. Uh, I'm not gonna take too much longer here, but yeah. I, I wanna thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, thanks to Corsair as well. Again, I didn't expect this to be you know, a, a super positive or super negative review. I just thought there'd be some you know, some pros and cons. I, I'm overall very happy here. You can tell they definitely cheaped out on some of the components, but that's reflected in the price and you're really not being penalized for it. I mean, you've got an Asus B660 motherboard DDR4 in here. It's 130 bucks. One of the cheapest B660 boards on the market. But like I said, it makes sense in a budget build where you're trying to cut some costs without really, you know, just 
flagrantly spending where you don't need to. And you don't need to buy a Z-series motherboard for a locked Core i5. So the combination of hardware makes a lot of sense. Corsair did great there, and they kept the price down. Other than that, I really have no complaints. So check them out. I'll have them linked in the video description as well. But uh, yeah, if you want to enter to win this, just leave a comment and be subscribed. That's all I ask. Thanks so much for watching. Give this one a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, especially if you want to enter that giveaway. And uh, yeah, leaving a comment down below. Also, if you want to enter the giveaway. This is my usual spiel, but it does overlap with the giveaway now, so I do have to, have to emphasize that. Anyway, I will catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.